I deeply focus, sparks will be conjured around me. I used to believe that's my arcane skill, and my friends always described it as Flamia's on fire! <laughs> it sounds kind of cool to me, actually. This is a miracle of nature, like the Great Barrier Reef. Of course it's pleasing to the eye. Many would wrestle with the heat wave and travel all the way here from Alice Springs by bus. Hmm. I have to admit, it is worth the effort. The temperature here will get even higher at noon. Ezra has prepared plenty of cooling tablets and water in the medical kit for us. If anyone still suffers sunstroke, we also have the budgery girl coat as an emergency measure. So that's why Ezra took you to the room before we left. To tell you all this. Ezra is worried about you, and so are we. Hmm. Someone is feeling bad about what she said earlier. If you ask me, that human girl has a good heart. Maybe she can work on her ways of communicating with people, but that altruism in her is almost angel-like. And she has the face of a little angel. Wouldn't be such a bad idea to put her in some baby care commercials. I heard those things pay you generously. I might as well ask what she thinks. Huh? Go forward. Ah! It's talking again! What? Who's talking again? The flame! It's talking! Didn't you hear it? Nah, it sounds the same to me. This is just the sound of fire burning, snoring like my late old man. Well, maybe you can also try turning off this little thingy's TV. Maybe it will jump up and shout, I'm still watching. I'm not joking. It's really talking. Listen. Temperature has gone up, and it's transforming. What is this, a rocket? No more waiting. Mind your steps and keep up. A race in the desert. Ooh, great. 
I wonder why I'm not as clever and creative as you are. Miss Verdon. Was she talking to me? She always looks over. Perhaps she knows that I'm following them. But... no. I'm hiding well. They shouldn't know. Having emotional turmoil, acting impulsively, feeling fanatical about the retrieved memories, and the unstoppable urge to return to the homeland. This all match the description in the research notes. And now the fire, which is also the key in this case, is burning vigorously. Hmm. The notes end here. That's all we know about reincarnators. I can't deduct more based on the current data. But at the same time, the unknown can be dangerous, yet exciting. It may bring about catastrophes or miracles. Just like Arcanists. So charming and lively. My job is to help and protect them, so their burning enthusiasm will not be dampened. Like what Mom said, this is our mission as mankind. The annual jumper frog mushroom, the fairy ring powders, and the butterfly shaped portobello mushroom. Very well, I have them all. This time, I'm prepared for any danger. Gotcha! You're not running away from. This is the beginning of the journey. Beginning of the journey? No, we set off from Melbourne. We're close to Uluru now, so it's almost so distant. Gosh, what are these? These are murals. No, they are reliefs. All the marks are carved out of the wall. These carvings existed long before any murals. And they are rougher. Of course they are. Just think, when did our ancestors learn to draw with paints? And when did they start carving with sharp stones? They're beautiful. Like star trails, one circle and another. I think I've seen them before. They feel... familiar. And make me thirsty at the same time. We don't need a spring. We brought water ourselves. Drink as much as you want. Hmm? Look here. These are most probably some ancient relics. This one looks like an animal. And this a plant. Hmm. And what is this? Birdie. They have something to do with people's lives. These marks have to mean something. Maybe they will lead us to the entrance to the stadium. This is a time when Spathadia's opinion matters more than ours. Come, key girl, take a look at this. Spathodia? Where... where did she go? And that fire... they're all gone. What the hell is going on again? She better be pulling a prank on me. I heard her footsteps behind me just now. Relax, Desert Flannel. We've got help. Ezra? 
How did you get here? Wait, how long have you been following us? From the beginning, when you were at the hospital. Sorry, Miss Desert Flannel. Please let me check this first. This smell. I can't be wrong. This is Devil's Thorn. What's that? Does it have anything to do with her missing? A rare kind of mushroom that grows in the desert. Allegedly, it's genetically connected to lizards. I've only seen its pictures in books. It has wide open pileus with sharp spikes, and its roots are as absorbent as a sponge which allows it to absorb and preserve underground water. They only appear around water sources. And with this spiral pattern on the wall, I think... I think I might have a way to find her. Please, come with me. and spirit we are bound to find. I don't want to make up with you, you dumb ball of fire! Neither do I, you stupid girl! My hands are burning. Like they're soaked in fire. That's because you reached into me. We had a fight. Attacking each other with nails like two cats. like the day we first met. I can feel my knees trembling again. I know this game. A sport which is not popular enough to be included in any commercial or professional games. It's also the sport for which I've been secretly training myself every day after lunch. The light bulbs begin game. Malingi's Harvest. No. No. But these are not light bulbs for the athletes to pick up from the ground, but fire. And I don't have such a burning campfire at home. It can only be found 
here. Beside the flowing spring, under the starry sky, on the scorching sand, I saw the burning campfire and the sparks scattering in all directions. My hands surrounded by blazing flames, I touched the inner cone again and again as I flew by. Immersed in great joy, I dove down from the air. At that time, our hands held each other in the flames. Our traces went on from one torch to another. Yes, I know. I remember it now. I once drank the cold water in the spring and covered my limbs with colorful strips. I sang and danced until a pair of wrinkled hands touched my forehead. Good girl. My good girl. Your hands are dusted, but you win the game and your soul is sparkling. It's you who find the hottest fire for us. It's you who connect to it and make friends with it. I shall grant you the scepter and lead you to the highest platform. I shall become the next priestess of the Uluru Temple. I shall take responsibility for every drop of sweat on the red soil, and I shall eulogize all the significant, fair competitions. <coughs> I shall store the flame in my mouth, my stomach, my heart, and my ribs. I shall protect her, not to let her extinguish, nor to let her go astray or away. I hereby swear, I shall be with the Uluru Games. Until... forever. kind that I know of. What are they? These critters are the guardians of the stadium. They are... Uh, I can explain it later. We have to deal with them first. No time to hesitate. Protect Bathadir and engage.
Plan A. Kevin, that. Your ending is fated. <laughs> I've seen your struggle with your own sides. Woo! Great! They are down! Everyone, for the sake of prudence, please stay back and do not approach before confirming the danger has been eliminated. No, there's no more danger now. Look! No need to worry or hesitate. Now, it's all clear. Long story short, mates. I've retrieved many memories. At least now I know who I used to be. My name in the last life was Flamel. Exactly what my close ones call me now. I am still me. I'm not replaced by anyone. You... are still you. Modern vision. This has never happened to any reincarnators as far as we know. That's because Flammy and I are very alike. And we both have the same beauty on our shoulders. <sighs> I am Flammy. I obtained the Uluru Flame from the fire with my own hands. I was the first priestess in the history of the Uluru Games. I am Spagutia. I keep the flame that traveled all the way from the ancient times inside me. I will become the next priestess in the history of the Uluru Games. Remember what I said, mate? My flame is our compass. Mom said good kids never lie. So, I always keep my word.
Bedia! Bedia! What? Where did she go? It was like a long slumber, or a view of the garden behind the wall. Now, I finally get to see the sun again. The world out there has completely changed. But you remain the same, Flammy, my dear friend. You found me and put an end to the long, dark dream. You set me on fire again. Bringing me back to what a flame should be like. Welcome to the end of the 20th century, Ulu. For you, this is an interesting era with many, many new things. Well, I think we can learn them together, later, one by one. Well, for my dear brave friends... Welcome! To the Uluru Games! My dear brave friends! What are you waiting for? Hmm. The conjuring of the entrance to the Uluru Stadium is sourced from a fantastic arcane ritual. Instead of a summon, it's closer to a sacrifice. The fire element also plays an important part in the sacrifice. In Spathadia's case, Ulu is her flame. Will it have anything to do with the unique condition Miss Spathadia has? Unlike other reincarnators, she still has a clear memory of this life, despite her young age. Or, it's because the two light spots of hers, the older self and the modern self, are not that different, so she's spared going through any drastic changes. And the reason behind it might be... Ezra! Yes, I'm here. What can I do for you, Miss Bethadia? I'm waiting for you. Ah... Uh, I see. Sorry, I was too involved in taking notes. I will pack and return to Laplace as soon as possible. But before that... I have to clean up the spores and the mess we made in the battle first. Otherwise, they may change the environment here. Oh, come on, you weirdo. You're leaving now? After all our effort? I can never understand you! Aren't you waiting for me to leave? Of course not! I'm waiting for you to join us! We'll go into the stadium together! I... Come to think about what I've suffered... Coma... Hallucination... Confusion... Thirst... Misconception that I was almighty... And then, as you can see, I fall into a coma again after my sudden disappearance. I think you're right. I do need a doctor by my side. But mankind cannot enter the stadium. We all know that! <sighs> blah, blah, blah. Please! The stadium has never shown itself to any humans before. When life gives you cake, just dig right in! Struth! This is the... Uluru Stadium? It's even more splendid than I thought. And more comfortable and pleasing comfortable and pleasing I don't feel the same way as you do
but not in the sense that this place doesn't look beautiful to me. On the contrary, it's stunning. But physically, I don't feel anything special. Maybe because you're human. Hey, wait! Uh, not so fast. Be careful, Miss Desert Flannel, you will fall! I won't! I won't! what her canis should feel. Miss Ulu! Uh, pardon me. May I call you that? Go ahead if you want, child. But of course, I would appreciate it if you call me Madam, since I'm a few hundred years older than all of you. Besides, I am the most sacred flame of the games. Hm? Fun running. <laughs> oh, well. is that a one? We didn't have anything like that before. <gasps> and those benches. Things change, Flammy. In the past hundreds of years, when you were absent. Countless changes happen to the Uluru games. New lawns and benches had somehow appeared in the stadium, but none of these changes were made by Arcanus. Those actually made by Arcanus were new events, new roles, and new management. These are the changes that really made the Uluru games different. never seen ice race walking in my memories let me see so there was no stone bearing divination or a new tridecathlon either ice race walking is not a traditional sport in australia it originated in northern europe and became popular in cold countries that's right ice race walking was introduced to the games in 1926 if my memory serves me well, it was introduced by the St. Pavlov Foundation. On one hand, they hope to show the internationality and inclusiveness of the game. On the other... On the other... Well, it took the place of fire race walking. I see. I read it somewhere before. At the beginning of the 20th century, after St. Pavlov Foundation took over the Uluru Games, some challenging and relatively dangerous sports were cancelled. This was also the turning point of the Uluru Games. From then on, the Games declined in popularity, and fewer and fewer athletes came each year. Hmm, these people. No, these idiots! They know nothing about the essence of the Arcana sporting event! Where on earth can you find an Arcanist who would burn their own legs in fire race walking? Everyone knows you'll be fine as long as you believe the fire is harmless. But, in point of fact, fire is dangerous. But think about it. It's unbelievable. Given your short fuse, I can't believe you just let them cancel your favorite event, Ulu! Short fuse? Yeah, you heard it right. She's got the hottest temper. Burns like a cell. <clears throat> Things change for me. I... have already spent over a thousand years in this world. 
who no longer the young, hot-headed flame of your age. Even your grandmother should call me Grandma now. Grandma? So they can just take away your favorite event just because you're old now? I don't understand! <sighs> anyway, Flemmy is back. It's time Arcanus took back the Uluru Games from the Foundation. Let's design a new list of events that fit real Arcanists. We'll start from fire race walking. There are woods here. Lula can start some bonfires with them. Will the Foundation agree to this? They seem difficult to deal with. Hmm. It's hard to take it over from the Foundation. But if we have all the security-related facilities prepared, and apply to host the event through Laplace Scientific Computing Center... Considering Spathodia's identity, we do stand a chance. But... the paperwork we're going to deal with... Come on! Come on! You're not supposed to talk about paperwork in the sacred Uluru Stadium! Instead of a bunch of weak office workers who would pant from climbing a few stairs, what I need is some real athletes who can help me complete the fire race walking. I don't mind whether they're cute or weird. I only need them to be energetic. This is the only thing we ask of athletes in this sport. Great idea. But the only inconvenience is that we are in the middle of the desert, a place where only flies visit. And as I checked my contact list, I saw only client, client, and client. The ordinary ones and the ones I once stood up. Where are we going to find athletes? Well, I happen to know many arcanists who meet your need. And they happen to be here. Right now. What? How come I can't see them anywhere? Hmm... Why are you opening the suitcase? Are you gonna organize your stuff here? Anyone care to have some fresh air? with smoked fragrance. There is no doubt that it tastes better than gilded carrots. And look at this army of royal gods. They must be here to greet the great Dali Clatter. Royal god? What is he saying? Ah, uh, no kidding. Is that giant creature covered with spikes his royal god? Thorny Devils, the enormous creatures born in the burning sand of the stadium. They used to be mounts for the players, but looks like they have forgotten their master after all these years of slumber. Enough talk. Let's put them back to dust and ashes. It could be found. 
Three, two, one, down. It's happening. Your enemy is weak. Plan A. Plan B. Hope I remember. you're holding a piece of paper from my bag <laughs> 